Oh, you're going that way too much. She knocked it to the wrong side. I think I'll try that again. Just push him. <laughs> Never had so much authority in all your life. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get started. A lot of things on the training agenda we have actually covered in some of the other topics and subcommittees. Um, the first one, talk about the status of EMS testing. Melissa, we, anywhere with the online testing? I haven't gotten a response back from uh, the first yet. Okay. So I'll update you all. Can you give me a call, man? I'm about tired of doing things. You can give him a call. I mean, the more. All right. All right. So right now we'll continue as we are with John Hess. If you need a, a test yes. scheduled, please call her in advance. Um, I talked to her about three weeks ago, and she has a very, very packed calendar. So if you need something now between now and the end of the year, I would contact John as soon as possible and get those dates arranged. Uh, we have a couple dates in Huntington. So if you need any type of testing, uh, we are testing in September the 25th and October the 17th. So anybody that needs to send somebody, you're more than welcome to give us a call, have them call Jonna, and uh, she's been very flexible about working people in and, and letting you know where the tests are available across the state. But you're welcome to come to our testing if you need to <coughs> get through in a hurry. Maybe we should recap with Melissa too. There's still a, a issue or concern with the online testing, is that correct? Yes, it has to be a sole source and fitted out and we've got to get specifications. Okay, so we inspect, but then in the meantime we can if we get everything worked out with Dr. Hirsch, we can go with the pencil paper test, get that out to the training agencies as it was before. Right. Um, but we'll still continue the process, go through the bid process as well. Awesome. Any questions or comments on testing before we move on? All right, uh, next item is the EMT recertification proposal. This is the one that's up on the website. This was rolled out at our last MSAC meeting. Uh, a few minor uh, typographical errors. <coughs> Jamie had corrected on those and the current version is up. Um, I don't know, have you received any comments? Uh, a few no. comments. Um, I'm looking at all the comments that come back during the, the comment period. Um, all of them have been positive. Um, pretty pretty pleased actually with, uh, with what's coming back. You know, when those comments come back, I, I look at those very hard because a lot of times you, you'll see stuff that that indicates that somebody's confused. And, and the way I look at that is, if somebody's reading this and they're confused, then we probably didn't write that well enough. Or, you know, there's an issue there we should look at. We shouldn't have people confused about things. So, but this has been pretty <coughs> successful and uh, I really haven't seen any negative comments about it. In fact, most people have been extremely in favor of it. Uh, we did go ahead and move forward because the implementation <coughs> date of this will be January 1. Um, so we're working on the training material that goes with it. Uh, again, I'm very fortunate to have people that, that make MSAC look good and Karen put a ton of work into uh, getting the slides together for this. Um, I'll show you those in a minute, but we need to have some help with developing the paramedic PowerPoint that's gonna go with this and the teaching outline. Uh, and we need some help with with somebody to do the EMR. Uh, remember, the idea here is we have one class statewide. That's what everybody teaches. It allows us a lot more flexibility by having that. Um, makes it easier on our providers to get the courses, get the modules that they need. Uh, but we got to get this stuff developed, and we got to get it developed in a, in a timely fashion. Uh, you know, like Clinton was saying earlier, you know, the, the team that's working on that. Uh, that leadership program, you know, that, that has been well organized and very demanding and timelines and, and you know, this is your deadline to get stuff in. <coughs> Everybody's been evaluated by that, so that's kind of where we need to go with this stuff. We need a we need a, a timeline and a deadline to get in, get a group together and get stuff submitted uh, for the paramedic and for EMR. 
As far as the EMT, somebody want to catch the lights? This is an idea of what it would look like. Um, it's divided into modules. So module one would show up like this. It would tell you what's included in that module. Go through the objectives. Now I will tell you this is uh, still a little bit of a working process. The material's there, but uh, there's some slides in here that we need to add pictures and stuff to yet uh, that aren't done. But this meets all of the NCCP standards. It follows that outline, that proposed outline, uh, to a T. So everything is in here. This is about 200 slides uh, that covers all uh, six modules, all well, five modules, and then the six modules are skill. So this is what it looks like, and when you get to the end of the section, find the end of the section. What's that? Hello. What over there? What is it? Yeah, it's divided. It divides out into the different subtopics as well. But at the end of a module, there's a breakdown that, that tells you. <coughs> Such as here. Tells you you're entering module two now and what's required of that. So all the modules are in here and ready to roll. But this is the same thing that, that we need to put together a group who's willing to do it and, and work on a deadline to do the same thing for the two modules for EMR and the eight modules for paramedic. Uh, but we've got to get this stuff done because we're going to be implementing this right after the first of the year and we've got to roll with it. And it's a lot of work. <coughs> This is not finished. This one's not finished. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's still a working process, but it is well on its way. Put some pictures in, make a few adjustments here. So, anybody interested in working on the paramedic or EMR? Which one do you want? Okay. Ryan Barry. <coughs> Person willing to work. Nobody else wants to do I'll do the Anybody want to help with the EMR? Right. You do the whole paramedic when you show up? Sure. You got a lot of work ahead of you, Ryan. Your staff and the other duties is assigned, right? Yeah. All right. We'll probably keep them all on this template just so they all look the same and they all function the same. Anybody got a problem with that? All right. So I can template this out and send it to you and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Any questions on this? <coughs> Once we get this up, we'll have an instructor, an instructor training. We'll have an instructor in service on it and pull it out. And, uh,
Do you want this done by January 1st? I would like to have the paramedic and the EMRs done by January 1st so that we can have time to review it. Um, it won't be implemented until uh, April 1st. But the EMT one, we need to get buttoned up here pretty quickly because it will be implemented January 1st. Well, I don't know how busy Craig is, but I'll see if we can get with him. I was just talking to Senator Casey. He said he gave a bunch of Pretty? Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and so Ben said he'd be happy to help with the permit. That was who? Ben Tacey. Ben Tacey. Yeah, Ben's, Ben's been developing something himself, and I uh, actually gave him some advice on some folks to contact uh, to, uh, to help submit some information he's got. So he should be contacting, actually, uh, Marsha. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, working on taking this program and making online modules to, to work with it. He was told to hang on until everything goes through yeah. before he starts putting the cart before the horse. So, and asked him to contact Marsha. I assume he's been in contact with you then. He's okay. been talking to both of us about it. <coughs> We've comments? Suggestions? Questions? Anything else for the training committee? We will look at, um, that actually came up earlier, special interest, but we will be looking at the program Marsha has. Um, we don't have a whole lot of guidance uh, when it comes to the tactical stuff. Um, that was one of the, the conversations I had with NBCC is, you know, at some point we have to get more involved with this because people are doing it anyway so you know, why don't we have a program in place so we're going to try to work towards that there's something out there in place and some, some guidelines of it. Mr. Hicks, you have anything? Not at this time. Anything else? Last call. All right. We'll adjourn. That's good. <laughs> well, I think I'm just talking to that range. I never heard of it. I
excuse me, insect to order. And start out with, uh, we'll do roll call first. <coughs> Ms. Carvel? Present. Connie is going to miss. Mr. Hicks? Present. Ms. Herkey? Here. Mr. Katie? Here. Ms. Knight? Mr. Krantz? Here. Steve is going to miss. Mr. Mary? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Satterfield? Here. Mr. Seaman? Here. Ms. Stewart? Here. Ms. Watson? Here. And myself. Two members absent. We have a quorum. And you folks may notice that we have a few uh, additions to the table. Uh, there were new MSAC appointments made in June and uh, they are effective now. Uh, so I'd like to welcome the new members, Trish Watson, Brendan Brown. Um, I'll give you both a, a second if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Director of Working Units for about 20 plus years <coughs> and I've been All right, stop. I'm going to get yelled at if you don't use that microphone because they can't hear you. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> No. No. Well, he didn't say it had to be on. He just said he had to be on. I'm the director of Lincoln EMS for about 20 plus years now. I'm also the president of Mountain State. I also function as a paramedic. I'm an EMT in uh, Logan County. I've uh, been there for about six years now. we the release that. Also, a uh, lieutenant on the uh, volunteer fire station. Two kind of clear out of me. And a huge epic failure for returning in that. <laughs> <Yes. Okay. laughs> All right, welcome both of you. Uh, appreciate your interest, and uh, I'm certain that we will value your input as well. Okay, the agenda for today, um, all members have that in front of them, I believe it's the second thing in your packet. Uh, first thing in your packet is the minutes from our last meeting in June. Uh, you've had a chance to review that. Uh, it was emailed to you. I need a motion to accept. So moved. Second. The motion is second to accept the minutes from our June meeting. Any comment? All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. The minutes are accepted. Okay, reports of the chairman. Um, there are interim legislative sessions taking place. Uh, they had their first fire and EMS committee meeting. Uh, initially, I was asked to prepare a report on behalf of MSAC uh, to be sent down there for that. Uh, that evolved into a we want you here to present it issue, so I went down uh, for that first session. You have a copy of that. It's labeled MSAC Legislative Report, August 2017, in your packets. Um, basically, I've reviewed this. I was able to field some questions. Uh, it was really nice to walk in there with... Um, Chris and Melissa there uh, showed us as a united front <coughs> heading in the right direction. So um, presented everything that we're doing, everything that we've done to try to increase um, visibility of MSAC, everything that we've done to try to get information out to small squads, um, and we'll, where we are currently at. And uh, again, you can see in the report, I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, we talked to them about the website. They uh, were very supportive in what we're doing. Um, actually, Senator Blair uh, had some very good comments about um, some of the bills that were introduced and, and why some of those bills didn't go through and uh, made some very good uh, comments about uh, the direction of EMS and where it's heading right now. And, you know, I, I say I get on a soapbox, but we're not going to continue down the same path if we don't all work together. 
and it's okay to disagree. <laughs> we all have to have a common goal. We have to identify that common goal, and we got to continue down that road. So, that being said, like I said I don't want to uh, read this to you because it's there for you, but it was received well. Um, there were a few senators and delegates that don't fully understand what MSAC is or that it even exists. Uh, one of the questions that I fielded was how many counties actually are part of your organization? And that was proposed probably three or four different ways he asked the same question. Uh, and then I had another uh, another legislator actually ask uh, if I was insinuating that we had EMTs and paramedics in the state of West Virginia that volunteer and could not understand that we actually have EMS providers that volunteer. So there's obviously a disconnect there of what they perceive EMS to be and what EMS actually is in the state. Uh, but we were able to get good information to them. We will continue to work with them. Um, Senator Blair and I um, have a love-hate relationship going on that will continue to prosper and grow. And uh, I think that for continually providing them information, I've been asked to, uh, to take back some this is why we don't use this. I've been asked to take back some information to them and answer some questions for them. Uh, I will have provided all their contacts, so we will continue uh, to work with them and provide them everything that they need. I do think after this report and after going down there and meeting with them that their main focus is going to be volunteer fire service. Um, I think at this point EMS, they are, um, are satisfied with and uh, you know, there's still some things that they have ask that we continue to, to do and continue to pursue a lot of that still revolves around getting information to small squads and that type of thing but um, it, it appears that, that volunteer fire service will be a lot of their focus in the interim sessions any questions on that okay committee reports special interest paul <laughs> the special interest committee report will uh, involve three things cct community paramedic uh, EMS coalition, and then uh, we will also have a short report on the trauma. In the earlier committee this morning, we did go over the inter-facility, which involves uh, CCT or class one, uh, the new pilot program that uh, we're working on trying to implement, which is class two, and then some class three changes. Um, those committees have been meeting um, throughout the summer and the uh, next one for CCT will be coming up on September 19th. Um, as importantly, the C3 IFT uh, recently formed a committee uh, with broad <coughs> representation across the state. It will meet in Flatwoods on, uh, excuse me, on September 26th here at this building and uh, for those that are interested uh, you can still be a part of that and so what we will now have is those different levels and what things are going on <clears throat> within each one of those all of those committees are nearing hopefully completion as far as new guidelines for CCT the new rollout pilot for the CT process will be beginning there may be some more information about that later in the meeting and then C3 is starting with probably some additional training opportunities um, for that level and uh, how that will interact with pre-hospital or inter-facility transport. <coughs> uh, as far as community paramedic, those committees have also been meeting all summer and uh, what we have with that is a lot of base groundwork. There has been two community paramedic uh, open to statewide classes uh, that have been completed. There is a third that will begin. One was in Charleston, one was in the Lewisburg area. Uh, the next meeting for that will be October 3rd uh, in Charleston, and it's a statewide meeting. There are many task force that operate underneath that, that program, and um, we have guidelines. Uh, we have payers that are interested. Um, we have programs that are kind of in a pilot stage that are working. I know that in the beginning people are saying if they were left out initially where that was at, I think now would be a good time if your agency is wanting to work on it because a lot of the legwork I think is, is been 
completed and now those projects uh, look like they're getting closer to being able to move out. The biggest challenge is still is a steady stream of reimbursement, keeping liability protection, realizing that in the community paramedic world, you're not dealing with a medical command center or one hospital. You may be dealing with multiple facilities in your jurisdiction and multiple physicians, including personal care physicians, you know, hospitalists, etc. So that type of, of networking change and uh, documentation is things that everybody's been working with. So Dr. Uh, Buzz Mason has been leading that. Uh, Dr. Mills uh, has attended, I would say, nearly every single CCT, C2, C3, and CP uh, meeting that I have, uh, which is extraordinary to get that kind of commitment from the Office of EMS. And so I think that uh, <laughs> as things are moving forward, um, you know, EMS has been very intricately involved with, with those processes and trying to understand and help that process along. Is there any questions about CCT or CP? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll just call him Mr. Mason. But uh, he has been very uh, instrumental in keeping that committee going, and um, any information that you would need, he would be the contact for that or come back with those programs and where things are at. Um, the other parts of special interest um, involve new programs, and it was a place where we also put things from as far as the EMS Coalition and our medical. Uh, for those that have that. So the EMS Coalition will be meeting uh, at Lakeview Resort Morgantown October 4th, 5th, and 6th. And that again is kind of a uh, <coughs> legislative arm or another way of getting information out to uh, the providers. And uh, there has been, the EMS Coalition is one that when things are changed along with MSAC can also have a, a voice in those things if you are interested in those types of programs or finding out it's a good way to get people together. It is in the northern part of the state for those that uh, uh, are interested in, in participating and going through that program. We also have, uh, Marcia and I was able to bring out looking at, I guess when it took, it's active Shooter, the, the programs that we're talking about, the Tactical new emergency care course. Tactical Emergency Care Course, um, and that's part of that subcommittee where new programs like that that may not have full, um, I'm not going to say endorsement because it may or may not with OEMS, but have not been regimented into the OEMS system, but people are teaching that special interest committee is where a lot of those programs come in and kind of cross-reference over. And so uh, we are looking at that program along with some others and uh, hope to move forward with that. So again, that meets at 8 o'clock every uh, MSAC morning, so it's kind of the tiger one for those that arrive early. Uh, it is a way to get those types of information and things out. Okay. Next committee's administration. Uh, had a discussion on the use of constant contact as a platform for discussion. Uh, a lot of good points came up in that, and what we've done is uh, committed a or appointed a subcommittee of uh, Dylan Hanley, Chad Weinbrenner, and Bob Dozier to work on, um, look at, work on, and develop uh, additional, bring back additional information to us, um, a communications platform that will work and allow. Uh, communication back and forth without becoming a, a venting platform because that's not what we want. Uh, Last year, well actually this year, we brought back the recognition <coughs> for providers, recognition for agencies. Um, we were a little late in getting things rolling this year, something new again, trying to take some of the things in the past and and rewrite those to meet our future needs and future certifications. So we got that out, got, the, got our 2017 complete, and now we want to work toward 2018. Our goal is to look at those forms, make some changes, corrections where we need to, and bring that back to our next meeting in December, 
for review and then again take suggestions on any changes corrections anything needs to be done and then that would the final product will be presented in our march of 2018 meeting and be distributed to everyone to take back to their agencies and start accepting nominations for recognition awards to be announced ems week of 2018 which will be third week of May 2018 every year. So we want to keep moving forward with that. We want to bring <coughs> recognition some of the spots this year. I think it was the EMR. There was no, there was a couple spots that there were no nominees at all. We know, you guys know providers out there that are good providers and maybe are deserving of some recognition for the good job they do and saving lives. So we want to get that program, kick it in gear, and get it in a much out there to everyone this year we have some more time to work last year we kind of put it together at the last moment decided to start that again so that's what we're going to move in next year any questions about that until Jamie comes back any questions or suggestions we will be happy to, to entertain any ideas, any ways that you think might assist us in getting the information out. I know it went out through CIS, but after the lengthy 58 minute conversation this morning about disseminating information, we all know that you know there's other ways and not everyone looks at CIS. So <laughs> any suggestions you have, we would uh, greatly appreciate those in helping us. <laughs> Policy, Procedure, and Protocol Committee. I'll do the first part on that, on protocol, and then I believe Jamie and others will do another section on it. Um, on the Office of OEMS website, uh, they have listed all of the new protocols and uh, additional information that's out for 30-day uh, public review. There are, I believe, four or five protocols that are listed within that. Uh, some are minor changes and some are more substantial, but would encourage everyone to look at that if you have not to this point. You have until September 19th uh, to submit any comments back. There was a pretty good discussion about some of that uh, this morning, and I think um, MSAC and OEMS is both looking at the fact of trying to get that information out and back um, and so that everyone has a chance to get uh, good data points in in regard to where it is with MSAC, the field providers, MPCC, obviously the office themselves, and then how things are, are written. Um, it was, it's duly noted that <coughs> while these are 4,000 series protocols, there will also be 5,000 series protocols, and then in the effect of uh, the spinal mobilization, it'll be <coughs> 6,000, 5,000, and 4,000 protocols. If the language is the same between all of them, then one will suffice for all of that. So again, you've got uh, the rest of this week or early next week, if there's any public comments on that, we look for you to uh, make those comments and, and come in on that. Some that received some attention this morning was the spinal, uh, <laughs> just in the fact that there's two and they have a little bit of overlap perhaps in the beginning. And then on the, um, as far as the uh, field air medical and hospital landing there's been some uh, information that people have with that that uh, maybe have some questions or some points of clarification or maybe where it might be slightly improved depending on how that protocol is written out so there may be some comments in so if you want to add your voice to that then that gives you an opportunity back to policies and stuff. Okay, so I just passed around and I apologize I don't know what happened to the rest of them but I don't have enough of these for everybody, so just share if you would, spread them out and share. This is uh, the protocol submission policy. And the purpose of this came up at the last MSAC meeting. We wanted a policy on how to submit a protocol. This was already taken to MPCC and passed by MPCC, so it just needs to come back to us. Uh, this policy is uh, a, a working tool. So if you want to submit a protocol, you have to have uh, some kind of research provided. You have to uh, have invested some time in it yourself before it's submitted. Uh, so the first part of it talks about the rationale, why you want to develop or implement or change a protocol. Um, 
gives you some, some questions that you should be asking, some things you should be thinking about, rationales. Uh, look at who your stakeholders are, because a lot of times we want to put a, a protocol out there, but we don't realize how much it's going to cost. And when we're looking at the state as a whole, a lot of squads can't afford the costs that will be incurred with some of this stuff. Um, so basically, it's got a, a template that you submit. Uh, it'll be the same. It gets submitted um, to Dr. Mills. It has to have a sponsoring medical director. It can be any medical director, but preferably you'd be working with your medical director. Uh, so they need to agree with you that, yeah, this is something good. This is something we should look at. So they sign off on it. Uh, you need to clearly define the proposed protocol. Uh, have strong supporting evidence. Okay, You need to look at what the fiscal impact is going to be. If you want to add a drug, fine. Submit how much that drug costs along with it. Um, again, you got to have your medical director sponsored. Then it gets evaluated. <coughs> so your the state medical director is going to evaluate it. Um, he's going to disperse it to subject matter experts if it needs that. Once it's been appropriately formatted, uh, it will be forwarded to the advisory council. It will come up in our protocol policy and procedure committee. Uh, at that point, it will be discussed there. If it's passed by MSAC, then it will go uh, to MPCC to be discussed there, and then it will be passed at MPCC, then it will actually become a protocol. Um, MPCC may do one of the following. They may request more information. They may request a research project. Uh, they may request a pilot study to be done. They might just completely disapprove it, uh, or they might approve it with modifications. So that's the four actions that they can take once they have it. Uh, once it goes through that process, now mm -hmm. that will go out for 30-day comment, just like everything else does. Uh, but that will be the process to get it um, to that point. Again, it, we spend a lot of time and months beating up protocols where all this work is done up front, it's a much, it'll be a much smoother process. Plus, there's actually something in writing that says, hey, Joe Blow wants to submit a protocol. How do I do it? Here. Yeah. So that's what we have. Um, like I said, we've already, this has already been passed by MPCC. So if we choose to do this, I need a motion to accept this policy. I want to get a motion to accept this policy. I make a motion. Do I have any second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Do I have further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the protocol submission policy? Aye. Aye. Saying aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. <coughs> protocol submission policy is adopted. All right. Um, we're still in the policy and protocol uh, committee. In your packets, the very last two things that you're going to have in there um, are the EMR, recertification proposal, <coughs> which follows NCCP guidelines, National Registry. And you will find the policy <coughs> that goes with that uh, in Mayor's Act. This is the exact same thing that we did last meeting with the EMT and paramedic. Uh, it's the exact same format. Um, it's just broken down for the EMR at this point. It requires them to have 40 hours and a four-year period. Uh, there is no particular CE other than what's defined for them, which is your MCI, hazmat, and CPR. Um, there will be a training piece that is developed to go with this. This, uh, as far as modules, the EMT was, was five modules by NCCP standards. We added the sixth module, which is our skills, that keeps everything together. We did the same thing here. It's module one, module two, uh, which is required by the NCCP standards, and we added module three, which is their skills, just to keep the entire class together. Does it make sense to everybody? Okay, if we choose to move forward with this, I will need a motion to do so. I'll make a motion. A motion to have a second. I'll second. 
Okay, I have a motion and second to move forward uh, with the EMR recertification proposal. Is there any discussion? <coughs> this remains optional at the national level if you want to take the EMR versus the EMBO or Emergency Medical Vehicle Operator. This is just another level that's still in there. Is that correct? This is the for restart. Yeah. Okay, a motion second, no discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, Any opposed? Uh, Hearing none, <coughs> motion carried. Now we're running into this quandary of getting things out for 30-day comment, and we want to be efficient, and we want to actually get some things done. So what I propose is this will have to go back to MPCC. They have not seen this one yet. Um, but I propose that we go ahead and put this out for 30-day comment, get those comments back, and it can get to MPCC when they have their next meeting. <coughs> so to do that, we need a motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to go ahead and put this out for 30-day comment. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Can you get that out staff me? Okay, while we're still on policy protocol, uh, the, the uh, yeah, excuse me. The last four things in your packet are the EMT and the paramedic. These are the revised ones. You guys had some things you want to revise. MPCC had a few things. Uh, so they are revised, just minor things in them. Uh, these have already been passed by MSAC. They've already been passed by MPCC, and these are currently out uh, in that 30-day comment period. Uh, when these come back from 30-day comment, these comments will be reviewed so far. Every comment on these has been positive. Um, <coughs> They would be implemented, the EMT would be implemented January 1, uh, and the paramedic would be implemented April 1, and EMR, we will just have to see how quickly we can get it turned around. Uh, the idea behind these policies are that we would have one research in the state for paramedic, for EMT, for EMR. That would be the approved research. It would be modular form, so if I couldn't attend module one, I can go to Paul's <coughs> class and, and take his module one and, and have the exact same material. Uh, and be able to, to mix and match like that uh, to try to make it a little easier on our providers to, to get certified and still have lives and careers, especially the volunteers. So, all that being said, um, these will be done, what is it, the 19th? 19th? Okay. So they will come off that. We will start working. Um, I did show the EMT program that's very well on its way to being done. Uh, Karen is going to work on the instructor uh, piece to that as well. So we have the PowerPoint already in place for that. Uh, we have, Brian has agreed to work on the paramedic. Um, and who, was Karen going to do the EMR too? Okay, and Karen's going to work on the EMR as well. We had the paramedic while we were, while we were at launch. Um, okay. We had Ben, Casey, and Brad Hughes wanted to work on the paramedic. Perfect. So Ryan, we'll get your contact information and you guys can work as a group. Is that okay? Appreciate the help. Uh, we need to have it done by next meeting, at least in the format that we can present, and it's going to be ready to happen. That'll be December. <coughs> I mean, if it's not complete, like you don't have pictures and stuff, kind of like today's was, you know. But we got a basic format there, ready to roll, and we've covered the stuff that's in the module. That's if we can set that as a deadline, that'd be great. You're going to send me the template. I will send you the template. Yes. Sir. I will do so. Okay, so that's the status on those. I have a question. Certainly. When, when we start one of the modules, what will it be like on the West Virginia website to find out what else the module board will be at the state we can go to do that to always find information ourselves? It will be listed in CIS by module. So <coughs> there won't be any more just submitting an EMT research. It will be EMT research module one, EMT research module two, and that'll tell you then where it's at. Which direction to go to. Right. Okay. That is correct, John, right? That's how you want it. <clears throat> that, that that would be the prayer for us. That way, there's no confusion about who's teaching what module, where, and when. Okay. So if you're looking for it, you can actually go in there and search and find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we had two protocols um, that were submitted, and these were submitted obviously before we uh, we went the route of the protocol submission form. <coughs> um, one is, well, they're both to add ketamine, and they're in your, your policy, or in your booklets there, uh, 4902 and 4607. 4902 is for pain uh, management, and it adds ketamine and a 0.2 milligrams per kilogram max single dose of 20 milligrams slow IV push uh, or 5 milligrams per kilogram IM. But that's administered to non-cardiac related pain after the administration of fentanyl or morphine. And then the behavioral emergencies 4607, uh, it was divided. Uh, H and I or chemical restraint, <coughs> chemical restraint, behavioral patient, chemical restraint for the excited delirium patient. The excited delirium patient uh, states number one, a psychotic behavioral extreme excited delirium is suspected. Uh, you can administer ketamine a single dose, five milligrams per kilogram IM or two milligrams per kilogram IV IO. And then the note with it is if suspected or known presence of benzodiazepines in the patient. Consider half dose to, minim to uh, minimize respiratory depression. Again, this is first trip uh, through MSAC for these. Uh, I would make the recommendation that they also, if we accept them, go out on 30 day comment now, and then they would have to go to MDCC to be approved by the physician. So if we choose to accept the addition of ketamine, those two protocols, I'll need a motion. So, Pat, I just have a question about this 30 days prior to. Um, so what happens if you put out the 30 day comment, then it goes to the next group, they make an alteration to it. It's gotta go back out the 30 day comment again. So we just question whether we're truly saving any time, although I get the intention of wanting to do it. Procedurally, I'm not saying that's the case. I just think, I think it is. We might have to look at that. goes after 30 days and there's comments back the other way it'd be nice if you got to go to everybody in the same 30-day period but that obviously doesn't work with them right it, does, it doesn't work so getting it out now will <coughs> real speed the process up tremendously from just waiting okay but we're, i've also asked to have some kind of guidance from the legal council on what we need have to do with this 30 day comment. Does it have to go back out? You know, the doc say this is how we want it. You know, the, 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 it's already been out, we've got comments, this comments have been considered. Does it go back out again? Right. Okay. 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 I still think they're going to say yes, because the concept of a of, of 30 day comment is here's the document, this is it, comment on it. Not here it is probably just a draft because somebody else is going to alter it and you don't get to see the final. That's not how 30 day works. So just it's going to be a timing thing I think. More and not everything has to go through both organizations but right. stuff like this. But right. Okay. Like I said I think the intent is great. And I think even if you look historically protocols have taken months almost or years sometimes so even if it was 30 days out and then back and 30 days out you're really still talking two months or two and a half or three months and it's in a process where people know where it's at yeah. get things prepared because i think in the first 30 day comment obviously people are going to look at whether i don't know ketamine would have that but you know financial situations or you know control situations whatever all that is that gives them an opportunity to look at that and then if it oh if and, come back. and yeah let me say that as well um because of the expense of ketamine those were both put in there as optional not mandatory <coughs> And 
we do need to address whether this is going to be in the 5,000 series protocol. These are secondary treatments, so they can be optional. And again, it's a, it's a what I mean is for the ACTs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we can address that. Well, actually, that's probably going to be a, an NPCC decision. Right, but it'd be good to at least present them like that, or at least put them whether it's going to be the one vote or. Okay, so I need a motion if we're going to accept these. I send them. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? Okay. All those, uh, <coughs> um, all those in favor? Uh, uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried to accept these. I need a motion to send them out for 30 day commenting meetings. Motion for that. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? No. Any vote? Hearing none, they will be put out this afternoon as well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a motion on the She wants to make a motion and somebody else take over the job. Everybody stays until it's done. <laughs> okay, one more thing in your packet. Um, and this is just. Uh, well, we'll, we'll end up voting on it, but... Uh, oh, TXA? Yeah, we can go over that, too. Sorry, before we skip the next thing, there's a TXA protocol in your packet. Last meeting, um, we got in the middle of a situation where there was a group that was doing a pilot program. Uh, we had had a proposed protocol presented. Um, they got offended, and I completely understand why, because they felt like their toes were being stepped on, and we don't want that, we don't need that. <coughs> so we pulled that off the table and said, you know, let's do some more work on this, and let's work with you since you've done this pilot program. You've got good information. You've got, um, you, you know, already have something in place. So that's what we did. Um, Beth could not be here. She's actually in uh, Florida. So the information she sent me last night, uh, is in this protocol, so we have 4112, the TXA protocol, it is optional again, uh, so squads that can't afford it, you know, it's not something that they have to add, um, but this matches the pilot program that is going on currently, um, so this is the, the same process, we need to go ahead and approve that if we're going to, and whoever makes that motion, go ahead and include that we're going to put it out immediately. <laughs> Okay. With a motion, Dr. Herkey, to accept this and put it out for 30 day comments. Second. Do you have a second? Any more discussion? Okay, this will have to go back to MPCC. Uh, so, all those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Hearing none, TXA 4112 is approved and we go out for 30 day comment. Okay, the big packet. Uh, we have multiple requests for quite a while now to have some kind of drug sheet um, or drug information uh, in the appendix of our protocols. We do not currently have that. Uh, I was able to get hold of another states and adapt it for what we needed and uh, been working on this. I did take it to MPCC. They went ahead and approved to add this to the appendix um, in its incomplete form. Um, and it's still incomplete because if we add these couple protocols and I'll wait on that, uh, we'll add those drugs in here as well. Uh, but all this is is a reference. Uh, eventually, the interactive protocols, I can link the drugs to this. So you click on the drug, it'll take you to this sheet and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, it's nothing more than uh, informative. It gives you the doses, uh, you know, how they're administered, that kind of thing. So all that information will be located in one spot. Uh, I'm going to share this with Rita, and they're going to use the same format. Um, and actually, they're already looking at the same format um, for the interfacility stuff. So it's going to work out well. It'll all be congruent across the board. So that being said, I need a motion to adopt this as a working document and put it in the appendix of the protocol. So I made a motion. Second. 
Uh, Any more discussion? Just briefly, this is perfect for a working copy. <coughs> if there is to be a place listed on what protocols this drug is used in, it might make it useful sometimes when you're looking at how many. <coughs> like there's a lot of times you're looking at a certain medication like epinephrine, if it's short supply, <laughs> what ones there are, it's something that's relatively easy to put at the bottom. This is an excellent format. We've been looking at this for quite a while. It should be updated. You know, something to what we have and anything else is right. very succinct. Okay, motion, second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, we will continue with that as a working document and get it in the protocols once they are released January. January. All right, where are we at? Okay, we're still in policy procedure and protocol committee. Some of this can be covered in new business, but um, I think we can cover it here as well. Uh, there was an issue with um, hazmat awareness and meeting the OSHA standard or meeting the NFPA standard. Um, NFPA actually has two standards, 472, 473. One is specific to EMS, the other one is more generalized. Um, however, I reached out to the Chemical Safety Board. I asked for a ruling from them uh, because I reviewed 472 and said, you know, this well exceeds the, the OSHA standard. You know, this should absolutely be acceptable. The other problem was that we had departments that, or EMS departments that run in fire departments. Well, they all take classes together. They were getting NFPA 472 certificates that were not being accepted by the Office of EMS to meet the standard because they have a wall that's clearly written that says it has to meet the OSHA standard and 472 by NFPA is not the OSHA standard. So I reached out to the Chemical Safety Board, I got this reply back, uh, and they gave me the states that this is a ruling that NFPA 472 and 473 and OSHA 1910 120 are congruent across the board and should absolutely be accepted. So we have it in writing. Uh, I would like a motion that we begin accepting NFPA 472 now and 473 now. I make the motion. Have a motion, do I have a second? Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion's carried. Uh, we will identify NFP 472 and 473 as congruent to 1910-120. That's your standard. Uh, the record is quite bullshit for a lot of days. Very good work. Every time you have options, that's Okay, that's all I have for policy, procedure, and protocol committee. Safety committee? I will discuss today about the fentanyl overdoses and concerns um, to first responders, <coughs> fire, EMS, police, and uh, the precautions you need to take and look out for because it is, can be a powdery substance and uh, it could do greatly harm and is recommended that each EMS personnel or personnel I have or so forth have their own PPE, their N95, uh, their own protective coverall, so forth, and uh, also provide the shield their own protection of their own Narcan to keep with them at all times. But however, I think I understand there's no limit on of Narcan to keep up with EMS pressure. And that was discussing on that. And also, Mr. Chair, you want to be discussing the safety issue. Vicki, you have anything to add for children? I know I'm at EMSC tomorrow. But. Um, as far as safety stuff, just what we talked about this morning, um, we're looking at ordering $40,000 worth of ACRs. Uh, they'll be distributed probably based on data, number of, number of, number of runs, or we haven't quite determined how we're gonna decide who gets the ACRs because each of them costs about $800 each. Um, so that won't take it very far, but it, it's a start. Um, what else do we have? Anything else? Okay. We'll move on to special reports, OEMS. Oh, I skipped training. You did, but you, <coughs> covered, you just kept right on talking, so I wasn't going to stop you. 
a lot of the information from training, uh, Jamie's already covered as far as the, uh, the new educational components that are still a work in progress for getting the rollouts, getting the training officers that are going to present the EMT and the paramedic and the new modules. So those are in development and those subcommittees will develop there was a training session this morning. Um, the hazmat was also in the training and Jamie's already covered that also. So Jamie, Jamie did most of the work. Um, the last thing that we <coughs> talked about with training was uh, we asked Melissa for a, if she had any progress toward the online testing and there was none at this point in time. So we're still going with the paper recertification exam for EMTs as we have done in Eatland. So still, everything's still paper. Um, anyone who needs a test, 